This is Indigenous Insights, and this is our second episode of the special topic series, Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women. In these episodes, we dive into real stories with real people, and it's some heavy content. Doing the heavy lifting when it comes to the research and content in these episodes, we have Ariel on the line once again from Bradford, Ontario. Ariel works in Indigenous Victim Services. Ariel, are you there? Yep, I'm here. All right, so last week's episode hit me harder than I thought it would. In last week's show, we talked about Alberta Williams. She was murdered at the age of 24 in the year 1989. It's an unsolved murder. 30 years ago, this happened. Uh, but today's story happened much more recently. Today's story is about the ongoing investigation of the murder of a young woman in Ada, Oklahoma. She went missing February 11th, 2018. And this week, we also have the victim's mother joining us. These episodes are aired on Eagle Country 105.7 and streamed from keepitinthup.com. You can also find these stories on the Indigenous Insights YouTube channel after they air. And we've also created a YouTube channel specifically for these stories to have their own little spot called Indigenous Insights MMIW. We also have a Twitter, and that is at Insights MMIW. And we have a specific email if you'd like to contact us with any questions or comments or case suggestions and that's indigenous insights mmiw at gmail.com and so far ariel the feedback has been pretty unreal yeah it's been so much positive feedback a lot of people sharing the stories uh there's been a youtuber that talked about us on one of his recent cases his name's lord and arts and that brought a lot of attention to our last week's video so the it's just been it's been great so ariel is going to be giving us the facts on the case here in We have Ariel joining us remotely today from Ontario. This is episode two of our special topic series, Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women. I want to take the time again to mention that these episodes feature real stories about real people, and it is upsetting to hear these stories, but they deserve to be told. Today's story features an ongoing case. The crime has not been solved. The victim's mother has been working very hard to make sure that awareness is being brought to not only her daughter's case, but all of the missing and murdered indigenous women. So Ariel has reached out to her, and she has agreed to share her story with us. We talked with her over the phone earlier this week, and we have the audio from that. Today's story features Brittany Tiger. Brittany Michelle Tiger was born on June 20th, 1991, just over one year ago. February 11th, 2018 was the last time that her family heard from her. Here's the audio from our conversation with Brittany's mom. Okay, so this is Mitch for Indigenous Insights. We have Ariel here with us. And on the phone line, we have Bernadine Bearheels. She's Brittany's mom, and she's calling us from Ada, Oklahoma. Bernadine, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, I am originally from South Dakota, and I'm road split too, and, but I um, lived in Dallas, like, most of my life. What brought me to Oklahoma was my kids. Their dad is from Oklahoma, so they lived here, so I decided to move here. So tell us what kind of person uh, Brittany was. She was that. She was like always had a smile on her face, and if you were feeling down or sad, she she would. I mean, if you talked to her, she she would do her best to make you feel better. I mean, she was really caring and thoughtful, and she have a good sense of humor. She had a funny sense of humor. To talk to her, you would be laughing because she's she's hysterical. And she was artistic, she was smart. She was artistic. You what know? kind of uh, hobbies did she have? She she liked to draw. She would um, draw like you know whatever she I guess like whatever she felt you know like flowers or or faces of people or you know just pictures. Different things. Do you have things that she has worked on or she did? I have some of her drawings. Yes. Oh, very cool. She had a lot of great qualities about her. She was. I mean. She was a protective person. She was very protective when it came to uh, her kids and her her family and people she cared about. I mean, she was was very protective the way she was. Very good. Okay, tell us a little bit about the time then when she went missing. She she had messaged me the, the night before because I was going to Dallas and for the weekend and she had messaged me. The night of um, February 11th last year, and 
she um, asked if she could come with me to Dallas, and and um, it was like right before midnight, so I was already in bed, and and so I was falling asleep responding to her, you know, I mean, because it's in the middle of the night, but her first texts were right before midnight, and her last text was a little after midnight, and she said she was going to get a, you know, she needed a break from Will, her husband, and she wanted to go see my other daughter with me, Josie, and um, I asked her where she was, you know, where she was, and she said she was fine, and, you know, that she would call me, you know, she would call me for messenger, that her phone was broke, and she never did call, so. That was the last I had with her. And that was in usually a typical time she'd be texting you? No. Um, well, she texts me all hours of the night, but, I mean, at different days. But that that night, I mean, I didn't think anything was seriously wrong, you know. Did you know that they had been previously having problems? Yeah, I, I knew that, but... Um, I didn't think that it was pulled that far. A week later, Brittany's sister reported Brittany missing to police. Brittany lived with her husband, William Gomez, so the police questioned him when they went there to do a welfare check. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about her husband? Yeah, he was um, he was a nice guy. He did everything for her. He, um, he was always there. And, I mean, I'm not sure why, but... He was like always there, right by her side. You know, he took care of her when she was sick. He was he was really good, but there were times that he he didn't want her to go somewhere without him. So it was a little yeah. bit like he was a little bit controlling at times, then, or yeah, yeah, yeah. because she she would she said she felt smothered by him and she needed a break, and so she would she would I mean. She would try to just like, I mean, she would go in the other room and, you know, he would wonder where she's at, you know. So how did he react if she didn't do what he wanted? Did he get angry? Was he, I don't know, standoffish? Uh, around us, he just, he didn't show, you know, that he was angry. He just, he showed he just wanted to be with her. Okay. You know, possessive almost, I guess, I mean. But um, when there was an incident that she told me about, uh, she said that they were arguing and she was trying to leave their place, their apartment, and he, um, she said she had to basically fight her way to get out. And she got, she got away from him and got out of the apartment because he was physically trying to hold her in the apartment. And when did that happen in relation to her going missing? This was like several months before. We're going to send it back to music here on Indigenous Insights. When we come back, we'll talk more with Bernadine. This is Indigenous Insights, Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women. Today, we make sure to remember Brittany Michelle Tiger. Special Topics Episodes. This is our second Special Topics episode, and it features the story of Brittany Tiger. She went missing in February of last year after an argument with her husband, William. Her case is ongoing. According to police reports, William told officers that Brittany left and that it wasn't unusual for her to leave for periods of time without being in contact with him. However, Brittany's mom disagrees. They did a welfare check and they talked to Will and that's what they asked him. They said, why didn't you make a file of missing persons report? And he said, um, he told them that she does that. She takes off and she'll come back though, but she takes off for weeks at a time. And that isn't true. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. That's not true. No. No, and it was never like her to not stay in contact. She had left, like, the summer before, and she always stayed in contact. Always with me or her sisters, somebody. Yeah. So when she went missing, that was, that was out of character for her to not contact me. After Brittany was reported missing, there were two reported sightings, one on February 18th at the Ada Walmart and another on February 24th at a restaurant in Midwest City, Oklahoma. On March 16th, 2018, just 33 days after Brittany last messaged her mom, a rancher found a body on on his property while he was checking his cattle and reported it to the police. The area the body was found was off County Road 3680 in Cullihoma, Oklahoma. 
a Choctaw reservation over 15 miles away from where Brittany lived. It was confirmed that the body was Brittany. Brittany's body showed signs of decomposition, so she had been there for a while before she was found. Her arms were up over her head, which, according to police, indicates that her body was dragged there by her legs and that she was killed somewhere else. How do you feel law enforcement has handled everything so far? In the beginning, I I didn't think that they took me very seriously when I first went to them to to tell them, you know, that talk to them, talk to the detective about her missing, and you know, I was telling them that what if, you know, he accidentally overdosed her, or you know, she's laying somewhere, you know, and I didn't think he took me very seriously until he um i brought up the fact that he wouldn't let her out of the apartment at one point and so that kind of like raised a red flag and kind of you know yeah. got his attention i guess and then after that the investigation looked like it was it was like they were doing something you know they were trying and now it just seems like there's nothing new have you had a chance to meet with will during all this I did, and me and my daughter, because, I mean, a long time went by, and I was, you know, I, I wanted to talk to him, and I looked for him when I would be driving, and, you know, I mean, it was, I ran into him at Walmart, and I didn't know what I was going to say if I ever seen him, but when I seen him, when I seen him, um, I said, hey, Will, you know, because he just stopped, because he was walking, he was in a hurry, and... I don't know. I just had all these emotions, you know, come through because I didn't know if he was responsible for her death. Everything pointed to it, his actions, everything. And I just needed to ask him, look him in his eyes and ask him, did you do anything to my daughter? And he told me, no, he didn't. And, you know, that he adored her, and I told him, I said, I'm ready to talk. I, I, we need to talk, because I've been looking for you. So what is his explanation? Wh- when's the last time that he saw her? That night, February 11th. He said he woke up, and she was gone. But his story has changed a couple times. It's changed. Yeah. I mean, he said he woke up, and she was gone. She has many questions when it comes to Will and his actions in the period after Brittany went missing, but Bernadine stresses that it's not anyone's place to judge. When Bernadine and her daughter met with Will, she said she had mixed emotions. She wanted to believe him, and he was convincing, but as time went by, she started to doubt what he told her. She said it's easy to blame Will because he was Brittany's husband, and he should have been protecting her and helping helping to find her when she went missing. She told us that she always tells her daughters that it's not our place to judge others and that we shouldn't blame anyone without evidence. In many cases of missing and murdered Indigenous women, getting proper media coverage is sometimes a problem. Yeah, what about the uh, media? Has the media covered covered everything properly? Um, yes, I think that the one with um, Verified News, they she did a good job. Um, but when they were... When they first announced her missing, and they said that she walked away from the apartment, obviously she never did walk away, but, you know, I mean. Yeah, so and, it was, they were, like, following um, William's account of what happened then, right? Yeah, okay. and they got that information from when the cops went, that when they did the welfare check. Verified News Network, which did a story on Brittany and interviewed Bernadine, was one of the first sources I found on Brittany's story. It was nice to hear that Bernadine has had positive interactions with the media and getting the proper information out, and the other organizations have been helpful for her. Well, uh, you know, I'm very thankful to uh, Mariah Adair, the one that, um, she's the one that, uh, she started the MMIW Southeast chapter in, here in Oklahoma, so she's the one that's a big um, help as far as getting the word out there, and then uh, the Joanne and Curtis Knighton, their their um, parents, their other parents. Okay, we might have to yeah. reach out to them, Ariel, and see if we can get them on the show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're they're a, a huge help, and I'm thankful to have all their support and in all of this. 
So, Bernadine, I want to say uh, Chimiguetch for calling in and telling us your story. And, you know, we really wanted to, this to be your platform to get your word out. If if there's one thing you want people to take away from this, what would that be? I would like people to know that that she she didn't, she deserves justice. She didn't deserve to die the way she did. I mean, we don't know how she died, but, I mean, to be put out there like she was and discarded. And I want people to realize that they need to start paying attention to the missing and murdered because Mm -hmm. it's happening. I mean, it's happening everywhere. And Ada was no exception. And I wish the community would come together and, and, you know, try to do something to, to encourage the law enforcement to work harder, I guess. Yeah. In their investigation, because it's been one year and all we're being told is there's nothing new. And that seems to be something that's across the board in all the different communities this is happening in, too, is the is the uh, lack of law enforcement effort. Yes. Very discouraging. Absolutely. So that's why we wanted to do this series in the first place. So I'm hoping that with this and, you know, sharing as much as we can, that maybe we can influence people to put some pressure on law enforcement or maybe law enforcement gets word of it and they know that they need to do something because somebody somewhere knows what happened to Brittany and we want to do everything we can to help you in any way that we can. Thank you. Yeah, she has three kids, you know, and now they have to grow up without their mother and my heart breaks for them. And my other two daughters, they are the ones having a very hard time with that. Wait, so who has custody of her children? I have... Her son, Christian, I've had him for a couple of years, but, and the grandparents have the other two. Okay. Yeah, the other, on his side. So it's good they remained within the family, though. Yes, yes. They really do miss her, you know? Yeah, I can't even imagine, imagine the hurt that they feel and that you feel, and I just, yeah, yeah. I don't even, it's kind of like I'm speechless because it's thinking about how you must feel and, you know, trying to get the word out by yourself. Yeah. Well, Bernadine, once again, Chimiguetch for calling us and uh, letting us share your and Brittany's story here. And uh, we hope that we can help in the effort. Thank you so much. Thank you. After the interview, Bernadine sent us a letter that she wanted us to read to the listeners. So here's Ariel with that. We want to bring awareness to my daughter, Brittany Tiger's ongoing investigation by the Ada Police Department in Oklahoma. The detectives involved are still working to find the person responsible for Brittany's death. If you know anything about what happened to Brittany, please come forward as we are in need of some answers and the details surrounding her death. We know that somebody knows what happened to Brittany, but may be hesitant to, hesitant to come forward. If you do not want to be identified, you may also give your information anonymously to the Ada PD by calling 580-332-4466 and speak to Detective Engel. If you saw Brittany or were around her the surrounding week of her disappearance, which is February 11, 2018, and notice something out of the ordinary or strange, please let us know. Brittany deserves justice, and she did not deserve to die this way. She was my youngest out of my three daughters. She was beautiful, smart, artistic, funny, cute, thoughtful, kind-hearted, giving, and very spunky. Brittany had three beautiful children who have been cheated out of having their mommy in their life. They miss her a lot, and we do our best to comfort her kids by hugging them and reminding them of how much she loved them. Words do not ease the pain that they feel inside. Their lives are forever changed, and now they have to grow up without their mommy, and nobody will ever be able to take her place. When Christian is feeling sad, he tells me, I wish we could start our life over so that we can have mommy, and I'm at a loss for words. I tell him that I miss her too, and she is always in our hearts. My heart breaks for her kid, three kids, Jalen, Christian, and Samaya. Brittany had kids, two sisters, and a big family that loved and cared for her. Obviously, the person that did this to my daughter didn't realize that she had so much more in her life than what she allowed them to see. Why did the person think that they had the right to take her life? We can no longer talk to her, hug her, laugh with her, because somebody got angry and decided to end her life. The person that did this to Brittany needs to ask themselves a question. Whatever did she do to make you so angry? Was it worth it? Brittany's older sisters, Jessica and Josie, have also lost a sister that they loved very much. Now all they have is memories of Brittany to hold on to. That is all any of us have now. 
So far, there has not been any concrete evidence that can bring the person responsible to justice. We know somebody knows something that is relevant to the case. Please come forward with anything that you may think will help us put this case to rest. You could be the missing puzzle piece that can solve the investigation. When Brittany first went missing in February of 2018, we were amazed at how many people showed their love and support during this difficult time. We are very thankful for the many prayers that were said on our behalf, and we believe that justice will be served. We do not want this to be another unsolved case in Ada, Oklahoma, so please help us bring the person responsible for Brittany's death to justice.